When I talked last class about explicit memory management, the main example we talked about was actually the Moore swarm, where they were exploiting a bug in a buffer overflow. They were exploiting that the arrays in C are not bounds checked, so we could send more input than was expected and fill up other parts of memory. That seems sort of irrelevant to this question of managed versus unmanaged memory. If we're defining managed is about whether you have to explicitly free or not. Is that connected at all with bounds checking? Could you have a language that is unmanaged, where you explicitly have to free objects, but every index into a, an object is bounds checked? Is there any reason you couldn't add bounds checking to C? So could you, you implement your own data type in C that behaves like an array but checks if references are in bounds? Sure, right? You just add code that keeps track of the size of the, the object and checks when you index it. So the C compiler could certainly do that. So you could certainly add bounds checking to an unmanaged language. In that sense, it's not really connected to that decision. It goes along with it, because part of the reason you have unmanaged languages is to keep things efficient and to have as much control over memory as possible. So there's an inclination to also give up bounds checking. But certainly it's not required, and there are languages that would have bounds checking, including a few set the right compiler flags with GCC or CLang that also have unmanaged memory. What about the other side? Can you have a managed language with no bounds checking? Would it be possible to have a language that gives you automatic memory management, meaning it knows automatically when to release objects, but doesn't have bounds checking or type safety? Let's look at some code. So here's some C code. We've allocated an object, so S is pointing some object. Now T is pointing to some location in memory that if you add 12 to it, you get to S. But where it's pointing is not to the S object, it's pointing somewhere else. Do we think we can make garbage collection work for C? So at this point in the code, how many references are there to the S object? So after the null, so, so we've reassigned S to null. So that means we can't reach the S object through S. Is the S object still reachable? Yes. Right, so we can still reach it. All we've got to do is compute the address. And the address of S, if we add 12 to t, we're going to get s. And we can actually do that. Perfectly, well, maybe not a perfectly correct C program, but a C program that behaves as expected. If you strictly follow the standard, it's actually not correct to have pointers outside objects and have them used to reference inside objects. If this was s plus 12, then it would be a correct C program. But it's certainly a, a C program that compiles without any warnings and behaves in a way that allows us to reach that. So if someone implemented a garbage collector for C and said, I'm going to be doing reference counting, and S is garbage, I'm going to collect it here. One time out of 100 when you run your C program, the garbage collector is going to run and put something else in that storage before you run the next line of code. You'll get pretty unhappy C programmers. One of the things all of these garbage collectors or reference counting systems rely on is that you have a very reliable way of knowing how you can reach objects. If you don't have bounds checking and type safety, is really hard. People have still built garbage collectors for C. And the way to do it is you've got to convince C programmers to follow certain conventions. The main conventions are to not hide pointers. If you store a pointer hidden in some integer or with some offset that makes it hard to know what objects are reachable, then your garbage collector may do the wrong thing. It's sort of necessary to have type safety and bounds checking in order to have automatic memory management. So that is why they're related, but you can have bounds checking in languages that don't have automatic memory management. So I want to jump ahead to mention another paper. So this was in a conference back in 1996, and I want to mention another paper in that conference because this was actually my, my second paper, but one that's quite relevant to what we're talking about today. This paper followed from a previous paper where I made a program analysis tool, and someone had tried to modify it and wrote these comments on a mailing list talking about how horrible the memory management in my implementation was and dealing with allocating memory in a willy-nilly way. I was a pretty inexperienced C programmer, so I didn't follow lots of conventions and making it impossible for people to figure out when things should be freed. And I actually did try putting a garbage collector in this C program, and it didn't work very well. So we needed a better solution. And the solution was to try to go from this willy-nilly memory management to something that's going to be systematic, some way of doing memory management where we're still writing C code, where we still have explicit deallocation, but we're doing it in a systematic way. And the way that paper describes doing this 
was by adding annotations that we would use to try to keep track of rules about how references could be used. One of the annotations was only. This should start to sound sort of similar to things that you've been using in Rust. And what only meant is that this is the only reference. We declare a variable with an only annotation. That reference is responsible for deallocating that storage, and we can't add aliases other ways of referencing that storage. So here's an example. We've got an only pointer, which is a global variable. We have a silly toy function that's going to set that to some new value. And we're going to pass in a temp reference. So temp means we're borrowing that just for the, the time for this function. So what are all the things that are wrong with this code? Our, our definition of an only pointer is that reference is responsible for managing the memory that is reachable from that. What should we do before we reassign it to some new value? So if we think of this as reference counting, we're losing a reference when we do that assignment. If that reference is responsible for managing that storage, we should have freed it before we do that. Right? We should do a free on the old G name. But now we've got a problem that we're assigning it to something that's not only. We would get warnings, and these are compile time errors. So we're trying to check the code is correct as we do this. 